uh, bring this meeting to order. Uh, regular meeting, July 27th, 2015. And uh, we'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And next we'll have roll call. Mr. Hinckley? Here. Ms. McGuire? Absent. Mr. Gajewski? Here. Mr. Benkowski? Here. Ms. Grasco here. Mr. Weig? Absent. Mr. Byer? Here. Um, next, any agenda additions? I know we have at least one, but anybody here? You have an item? Uh, yes, under information in my report, wanted to just provide an update relative to chloriding of the roads. Okay. Okay. Anybody else? Anything? All right. Uh, public comments. First public comment. As in the second one, people have four minutes to speak. And uh, in the first one, we ask you to uh, fill out a card giving us a hint what your concerns are. So do we have any cards? We do. Uh, we have a card from Richard Miller who would like to talk about riverfront property. And to that end, I would note there is a letter from Mr. Miller on the board table, uh, which he brought in along with a map uh, for purposes of reference, uh, I guess, in, in relation to what he would uh, wish us to speak about. I got it in there. Thank you. Yes. Basically, my, my comment is relatively short. You have a letter that I drafted uh, regarding my riverfront property that uh, is a historic building, and I would like to see it preserved. And uh, you have it in front of you. Uh, I'd like it entered into the minutes if we could. Is that possible? Mm -hmm. Yes. I don't have it here. Could mm -hmm. somebody read it? <laughs> You can read it. Oh, huh. okay. Yeah, that'll go in the official packet because it was here on the paper. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> it's two township board members. <clears throat> For those of you who do not know me, I am a history freak and an extreme idealist. What's right is right, what's wrong is wrong. Most matters are reasonably simple. It doesn't take a genius to know the difference. With that in mind, I wish to make a proposal regarding my commercial property on the Asalba River. After reading the Ascoda Press of June 17th regarding downtown revitalization, I suggest that our two townships purchase my building for just some of the following reasons. <clears throat> Simply put, that, build that building on that site cannot be duplicated. It's perfect, parentheses in my opinion. It was originally the Cold Bath Fishery Building in our lifetime. I built three current office spaces in that building. Any combination is possible. What better location for the Oscoda Sabal Chamber of Commerce office building than where the automobile actually first passed over that common physical property township boundary line, as you know where the township boundary is. <laughs> right in the middle of the road opposite my building. What better location for a museum with pictures and things which are of this area? I have Ward Dexel's 32 historic photographs of happenings, some around the turn of the century. These are printed, matted, and framed, approximately 20 by 24 in size. What better location for the one real thing that Oscoda and Asable towns are known for than the physical location of the canoe race finish line? All right there where it really is. All the above and more actually happened there on that site. I ask each and every member to physically see what that property is, to give credit to Mr. Dexel and all his efforts to preserve our history to appreciate the remaining Colbath family and to do whatever it takes to support our town's survival, both towns. 
Respectfully, Richard Miller. Okay, thank you. Uh, board members have any comments or questions? Thank you, Dick. You bet. Thank you. Thank you. Have you uh, presented this idea to the Osable? Uh, they've got it, but their meeting is until this coming Monday. But yeah. yeah mm -hmm. The big thing with, that I was dealing with was the um, announcement in that paper that um, funding or something could be gotten from the state, you know, for mm -hmm. preservation of historic downtown right. preservation. So mm -hmm. that's what we're hoping for. Is okay. That, that money would be available to preserve what history we have. Okay. Thank you very much. Yep. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Does the current Chamber of Commerce own its own building or does it rent? I believe you know? they own the building on property that's owned by Sable Township. Oh, but they own the building but not the... Right. Okay. <clears throat> Any other cards? No, sir. Okay. Um, well, then we get into the consent agenda um, minutes from the last meeting, meeting of July 13th. Anybody have any um, comment or question? Particularly if you're not, if you weren't present at the meeting and we did something that you're puzzled about or something. This is your chance to ask what's going on. So, anybody? Okay. Uh, then a financial report, uh, payment of bills uh, in the last two weeks uh, to the tune of $118,199.45. Questions about any of those items? Hearing none, uh, we have uh, Two uh, informational reports, part of the consent agenda, um, one from the superintendent and one from the community development coordinator. Are there any questions about either of the single items of each of those uh, August people in August? So, anybody? All right. Um, then I need a motion to... Uh, approve the uh, consent agenda. So moved. Okay. Support. I uh, believe it was motioned by Mr. Benkowski with support from uh, Ms. Carrasco. Roll call when ready. Mr. Hinckley? Yes. Ms. Carrasco, yes. Mr. Benkowski? Yes. Mr. Gajewski? Yes. Mr. Fire? Yes. Okay, moving along to the superintendent's report. Um, and um, he has about six items, and the first one is the OAFR, Oscoda Area First Responders Agreement, and a second facet of that is a uh, lease with Iasco County for space for their material. So, Bob? Thank you. Um, as indicated by our supervisor, there are two documents that are related being presented for consideration this evening. The first is a draft agreement with the Oscoda Area First Responders. Um, the first responders have uh, reviewed the document at this point and essentially signed off. It has been sent to Osabel Township and, and it's under review there. Uh, there's some feedback which I'll get to in a moment. Um, Based on that feedback, however, there, there is not a final version available this evening. Uh, in considering the document, the board should be aware um, that the incentive payment, which is in the uh, tentative uh, plan of action, which we talked about some time ago, the outline, which is included with my report, was not put in the agreement. And that was uh, based on input from the attorney indicating that uh, maintaining flexibility would be advisable under the circumstances. I did receive an inquiry from the first responders uh, as to whether 
it was likely the township would honor that incentive. I, I indicated I thought that to be the case, but wanted you to be aware of that. So even though it's not specifically spelled out, uh, I think there is an understanding that we would at least give it serious consideration moving forward. Um, in terms of the feedback from Asabo, uh, there, there was legal review undertaken on behalf of, of our sister township. Some comments resulted. Those have been provided to our attorney. So in terms of the agreement this evening, I guess there are two basic paths. Uh, one would be to set it aside and bring back a final document at the next meeting, or if the board were amenable to it, uh, it could be approved based on changes that were acceptable to our township attorney, based on the premise then that uh, those issues would be worked through uh, in terms of the comments made by Asabel's representative, and if, if we couldn't do that, it would be brought back. In the case of the second document, it is a lease agreement with Asco County. Uh, for the space the first responders have been using in the EMS station for uh, some time now. The payment terms are consistent with what we talked about previously, that being $250 a month. Like the service agreement with the first responders, it's structured on a month-to-month -month basis, and uh, that document is likely in final form at this point, given the, the scrutiny it's received in, in legal review. So. Uh, based on the board's discretion, both are being presented for your consideration. And if, if you were inclined to move forward with one or both documents, my suggestion would be that I any approval be subject to the concurring approval of the other signatories to the document, uh, that being Asable Township and the first responders in the case of the first responder agreement, and then the county and Asable Township in the case of the lease. Okay. Questions? On the second, about the agreement for the, for, for the county, it's on a month to month basis. What happens if two months from now they say the heck with it and kick them out? Well, that, that is a risk. The, the, uh, um, my sense in talking with them is that's unlikely, but, but it is a risk we would be taking, no question. On the other side, there's some concern here, I think, that. Um, we are going to be reevaluating the relationship at the end of the year, and if we sign a long-term uh, lease with the county, um, we would be obligated to make those payments, whether the first responders were continuing to remain in service or not. So those are the trade-offs that were evaluated. I think the county, frankly, would be amenable to a, to a fixed-term lease of some type. Have we received any up-to-date uh, EMS calls from the county? on what runs they have been responding to compared to what our first responders are? We haven't. You mean an update of the data they've given us a, a month or two ago? We haven't. We could certainly ask for that. I thought we did back about a month ago. We, yeah. we did we one did. time and yeah. yeah. We just haven't got it yet. I would personally would like to see us table it until we have the full board here and get the full final document. Yep, yeah, final document from it. Okay. Okay. Um, and, and am I hearing that you would like to press the county for a year long deal at $250 a month? Is that necessary? I mean, if it is. Not in my opinion. Yeah. No, I'm just making a point that yeah. you know, this, this could blow up. Well, there are 14 governmental entities in this county, three incorporated cities and 11 townships, and we are the biggest kid on the block in everything. SEV, population, square miles. I don't think they're going to do that to us. You know, I, I just don't. <laughs> Maybe I'm really naive, but... <laughs> Um, and I've said this before at meetings that Oscoda Township or parts thereof are represented by three of the five uh, commissioners. I don't know if that means anything, but three out of five represent sections of this township. So I'm, I'm not too concerned that they're going to do that. I may be too trusting, but I don't think I am. So. Anyway, uh, and, and we, are, we did decide that the extra 4,000 
goes to that, even though it's not written, you've explained that, that and it's not going to be written in, right? That's the intent, absent feedback yeah. from the board to the So they, they're having a problem, or at least a concern, that they should trust us, just like we're talking about trusting the county for the $250 a month. There's a little bit of a trust thing going here. Um, and, and they don't qualify for the extra $4,000 until they raise 4000 at least themselves. Is that correct? They there's, a, there's a specific threshold that they have to get to in, in total, and I believe it's 13000 some odd dollars, independent okay. of the 4000 Okay. All right. Okay. Um, Will, anything else? On, I think we should do this separately. Um, so I'm looking for approval of the uh, first responders service agreement, including some of the financial figures we just mentioned, starting with the base of 8,000. I made a motion to table it. Okay. Support. All right. Motion is to table uh, the uh, approval of the uh, Oscoda area first responders agreement until we uh, have some further documentation. Okay. Roll call. Mr. Gajewski? Yes. Ms. Carrasco? Yes. Mr. Pankowski? Yes. Mr. Hinckley? Yes. Mr. Byer? Yes. Okay. Now, again, uh, the second deal, uh, you also want to table the uh, commercial property lease with Iosco County, or is that okay? Should we go ahead with that? I think we need the first one before we go with the second, second one. one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I will make the motion to table it. I'll okay. support it. All right. Um, moved by Mr. Minkowski and supported by Mr. Gajewski that we also table the uh, connection with uh, the lease amount with Iosco County. Uh, roll call. Mr. Pankowski? Yes. Mr. Hinckley? Yes. Mr. Gajewski? Yes. Ms. Carrasco, yes. Mr. Byer? Um, no. I, I think that we ought to grab that amount as quickly as we can. So, Okay. Um, next. Motion is carried in both cases. Next, uh, we uh, item number two is uh, a uh, the a concept of an advisory committee to come up with a public a property uh, use uh, policy. Yes, um, we talked at the recent work session about a request that we had received to use township property for conducting yoga classes. Um, the request was withdrawn for the current year uh, based on scheduling, but there was an indication there would be interest in doing that type of activity next year. Uh, that discussion at the work session led towards the uh, broader issue of, of how we deal with such requests in general, whether we should have a policy and some kind of a formalized systematic approach to, to those inquiries. Um, and given the fact that we don't have to make a decision immediately relative to the yoga inquiry, uh, we talked about the potential benefit of creating a committee um, and the benefit that uh, the, the process would have from direct board member input. So this uh, particular item is being brought forward to see if the board wishes to consider creating a committee uh, of up to three board members to look at the potential development of a policy uh, to guide how we how we address property use uh, inquiries. We talked about this before, and I think there were some volunteers at that time. I think uh, Mr. Weed and Ms. McGuire. I believe, yeah, they were the two that at the meeting <laughs> appeared to be most interested. Okay. We could either nominate them or wait until they're here. <laughs> Is there well, somebody else that would be interested? Well, they, they spoke up. I don't want to uh, under yeah. Uh, yeah. But there is a vacancy. We right. can have three. Is there one yeah. other, Mr. Byer? Uh, I was thinking that I would uh, maybe serve as an alternate if somebody can't make it to that. You know, I don't know if that's good policy or not. If you step in and there's been previous discussion, you won't know what's going on. But uh, uh, 
and that certainly would be the case with me. So uh, let's let's wait until they're yeah. back, and we'll. But we do need you know, the rest of us should be thinking that we need a, a third member for that. So, all right, another tabling item. Uh, um, I need a motion to table this committee uh, deal. So moved. Support. Okay, moved by Mr. Hinckley and with support from Mr. Gajewski that we do table this until we have a full board, which uh, has been a little difficult lately. Um, so, uh, vo uh, the uh, votes, uh, name us, please. Roll call. Roll call. That'd be a, that'd be a roll call, yeah. <laughs> Ms. Grasco, yes. Mr. Minkowski? Yes. Mr. Hinckley? Yes. Mr. Gajewski? Yes. Mr. Byer. Yes. Thank you for your assistance, sir. Oh, anytime. <laughs> All right. <laughs> number three, uh, lift station number 25, pump repair. I don't think we, we cannot table this one. <laughs> um, recently, one of the pumps in lift station number 25 began overheating and making excessive noise. Um, given that this is one of our two primary critical lift stations, obviously they're all important, but the, the number 25 and number 4 are particularly uh, critical to service. Um, a, a repair company that was uh, in the area to assist with the Huron Shores issue was contacted to inspect the pump. Um, they determined that they would need to remove the pump and take it back to their facility uh, for purposes of diagnosis. We have subsequently received a quotation from that company being Kennedy Industries, which is attached to my report. They are indicating a cost of $15,165 to repair uh, the pump. There is an additional cost uh, of about $2,208 uh, that I believe our contract operator is going to pay um, through the maintenance allowance for the work involved in removing, transporting, and diagnosing the problem. So from an apples to apples comparison standpoint, the other quote we've gotten is hydrodynamics at a cost of $9,783.72. There was an effort made to solicit quotes from three other vendors, but at this point uh, we just have the two. Um, so uh, given the critical nature of the pumps, we're operating with one now and the lead time, which is several weeks to get the repair work done. Uh, it would seem, given that information, that uh, the hydrodynamics quotation uh, appears to be the most favorable option for us. I'll move we go ahead with hydrodynamics. Support. Okay. Um, are you familiar with hydrodynamics? No. Okay. I mean, their quite estimate a, spells things out, it looks like, pretty much. Yep, quite a difference in yeah. price. It looks like the same. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, and uh, Catherine has done uh, quite a bit of research, uh, trying to get responses from various pump providers. She, she has, and I note that Mr. Jerzyk is in the audience this evening on behalf of FVOP. Uh, I believe Matt's been part of that effort, too. Okay. But yeah, they've tried pretty hard to get additional quotes. And Matt, you are familiar with hydrodynamics? Yes, yes. We've used them in the past. Um, and Kath from the you know, state, she's used them in the too. So. Okay. So they do good work. Mm -hmm. They're actually located right down the road from Kennedy, so. Oh. Yeah. Their bid is uh, five or six thousand dollars less. So. Well, some of that that amount, that twenty eight hundred, was to, to come up and diagnose. So oh, I see. If, I guess if yeah. you took that off there, they're a couple thousand dollars. So. Yeah. Okay. Right. And we're still going to have to pay that uh, yes. research. They did. Yes. Yes. Okay. okay. Uh, roll call, please. Mr. Gajewski? Yes. Mr. Hinkley? Yes. Ms. Kresko? Yes. Mr. Munkowski? Yes. Mr. Byer? Yes. Motion carried. Okay. 
Um, next, number four is uh, the locating device purchase of same. Thank you. Um, this topic relates to the challenges we've had with frozen water lines over the past few winters. Uh, we have already uh, undertaken some remedial efforts in correcting some service lines in the current year, specifically four that have been recurrent problems have been replaced. But in order to develop a more con comprehensive plan of action, it's been suggested by our contract operator that some investigation would be beneficial. Uh, specifically to distinguish uh, the, the depth of the infrastructure at the locations in question um, and in particular to try and determine whether the problem is associated with township infrastructure or property owner service lines. Um, one, of, one of the challenges here is when those lines freeze and we don't get to them right away, they're frozen all the way through and you don't really know where, where, the, where it started. So the thought is if we can determine uh, where the depth problem is, we can probably assign some responsibility, then attempt to prioritize in terms of those services that, that are a township responsibility, notify property owners where uh, it appears that, that the issue is on, on their side of the curb stop. Um, the the uh, device would also be a benefit in pr prioritizing the various services themselves uh, in comparison because obviously the more shallow ones are likely to be problematic. So it, it appears it would be a, a helpful step in, in developing a game plan. Uh, the, the folks from F&V tested the two locators that we have. Uh, they frankly are uh, older equipment and they were not effective in determining depth. So we've gotten quotations for a uh, newer piece of equipment. We're talking $3,500 to $4,000. Uh, uh, the contract operator has suggested that we do demonstrations and, and or ask the, con uh, the vendors to do demonstrations so that we can ensure the equipment will meet our needs before making a purchase. So uh, at this question, uh, or at this point, the first question is, is the board amenable to purchasing such a device? And then secondarily, if so, uh, would you like a recommendation to be brought back uh, at the next meeting or the other approach would be to authorize a purchase not to exceed $4,000 based on the results of those demonst vendor demonstrations? I like the idea of them asking for demonstrations just to see what so do I. quality we're getting. Yeah. I feel confident, you know, with us, us authorizing $4,000. Is because easier approach than having them yeah. come back. If, if there's, for me, speaking for just one person, if if the demonstrations show one significantly better than the other, but it's not the lowest bid, I still would. I mean, right. we do that with accounting services. No, I agree 100%. percent so That's a tool that could yeah. really be used here. Yeah. Depending upon what the difference is in the bids. But, uh, Matt, can they use, can you use this equipment, will it work through the snow and stuff, or is this just something you have to use in the warm-up? No, it'll work through the elements. Frozen okay. ground, no problem. Right. Okay. It actually grounds to the, to the copper oh. line, or yeah. through the curb stop, so. Mm -hmm. Well, in some cases, we'd have to make contact with the homeowner, maybe get underneath the house, plant to the copper line or the basements, or go from the curb stop to the curb, to the yeah. so, Right. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Anything now else? along that same lines, now that we're using some plastic pipe, do we require a tracer wire PPR? Yeah. Yes. yes. Okay. So it'll also work for that. Correct. Hmm. Does it have to be a substantial diameter copper wire to? The tracer wire, I think it's 12 gauge. It's yeah. 12 gauge copper wire, single strand wire. Mm -hmm. And you're confident that most of the devices that are on the market can do that? Yes. Yeah. We don't have to ask them that and no, drill no, them. No, they're widely used in, in the industry. Okay. Okay. Motion. Motion. Okay. Support. Okay. Motion. Support. Binkowski. Hinkley. Roll call when ready. Mr. Hinkley. Yes. Mr. Gajewski. Yes. Mr. Gajewski. Yes. Mr. Binkowski. Yes. Mr. Byer. Yes. Motion has passed. Uh, next number five item is uh, 
contract extension for the uh, fireworks uh, vendor, Great Lakes Fireworks, that we've used in recent years. If memory serves, I think we picked them up after the Red, White, and Blue Festival some years ago. We were so impressed with what they could do, and, right? We've had them steadily we've, since. So. We have, yes. Okay. Um, to that end, our agreement with Great Lakes Fireworks uh, provides for two extensions. You might remember uh, uh, we bid this uh, for the 2014 fireworks, um, and uh, the, the extensions are totally at the township's discretion. Uh, we have one more year left then, which would be 2016. I've attached a copy of the amendment to the agreement that was used this year to extend the contract, and I thought it would be helpful while the show is still fresh in everybody's mind to raise the question as to extending for an additional year. The vendor's interested in providing service again um, and, and on board with uh, that extension. What I would uh, suggest specifically if we're going to consider uh, an extension is that an understanding be established that the vendor would be solely responsible for the labor needed to provide the show. I've provided a copy of the agreement. It's implied in the agreement that they do that, but historically the township has supplied uh, at least a few volunteers and or paid employees. Um, that's proven to be a challenge uh, both last year and again this year. Uh, we had spoken with them about providing the labor and there was apparently a little bit of a miscommunication but in any event for an additional five to seven five hundred to seven hundred fifty dollars uh, they would provide all the labor that would need to be added to the base budget or what would, would be an offset on the amount of fireworks but uh, that would appear to be kind of an important step uh, if we are going to consider extending uh, the other question uh, which um, the board may wish to uh, uh, take up here is whether input from uh, the other um, community that supports the fireworks event uh, would be appropriate. There's been a lot of discussion about the fireworks for the last few years um, and um, Asable participates directly in funding. So I neglected to mention that in my report but thought I should, should ask that question as well. All right, is there any discussion? Uh, of extending. Uh, we the only township supplied extra people for the fireworks or did Asalvo participate in that also? I believe last year they did, this year they did not to the best of my knowledge. So that's a, that's a problem with them also. And you were part of the attempting to try to get extra workers, is that right? Correct. Did we get any? Volunteers? No. No. Besides some family members of mine. Mm -hmm. right. I think they can supply mm -hmm. the workers, I think. Yeah. I it, it is yeah. actually. I believe last year's sure. volunteers were because they couldn't roll the fireworks right. out because of the way the pier's set up down there. Mm -hmm. There's no problem with that here. They can take care of it. Yeah, it's quite a, you know, it is a lot of hauling of the stuff, and then they have to set it all up when they get out there. So. And uh, am I right here that that even though our pier is better than that skinny little track going out to the south jetty at the river mouth, but when you get out to the end, they didn't they didn't have as much room to set up the the formations, and the, so that's one of the reasons why the fireworks were set off all along the pier instead of just out at the end. Right. They needed right? basically all the way to the first. The first hundred and right around 116 feet, including the last case on. Mm -hmm. They needed that whole section, which then means when they get the fireworks loaded onto the pier, that pretty much shut down shuts down the entire pier for the Fourth of July holiday. I mean, I think like the last, you could once when they're unloading, you can't go anywhere near, and then once they get out there, they need at least you're supposed to stay at least 100 feet away. So it was basically you could go out, I think, to the first case on um, after the fireworks got out there, which was right around one o'clock. So from one o'clock on, there is no access to the whole length of the pier. On the fourth itself. Correct. Yeah. That's when they deliver. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's not too bad. I don't mm -hmm. think. 
And once again, I've asked this question before, you guys didn't pick up any damage to the pier at all, or hear of any or anything like that? You know, I've walked out on a couple times since then, I didn't see anything, but I'm not a technical guy, so. No. Okay. No, no. I didn't see anything that looked like any kind of damage in the river out there. Yeah. So. All right. <clears throat> well, I think we should ask Ensemble to have a voice in this, uh, you know. I've never heard any bad things about the firework, mostly, you know, very profoundly positive things, but I think we should ask them. So should we move based on them approving? Yeah. I'll move we go for an extension for 2016 for the fireworks with the company providing the labor contingent on Osable approving likewise. In their next meeting? In their next meeting. Okay. Support. All right, and support from Martin. Roll call, please. Mr. Hinckley? Yes. Mr. Gajewski? Yes. Mr. Pinkowski? Yes. Ms. Carrasco? Yes. Mr. Byer? Yes. Motion carried. Uh, item six, leaf and brush disposal program uh, expanded uh, by four months, I believe. A question emerged at the work session uh, regarding the possibility of expanding the leaf and brush uh, collection program to cover the summer months. Um, currently we do it in October, November, and December. Uh, after conferring with staff, uh, it's being suggested that we expand to include June, July, August, and September with one collection date in each month uh, as a starting point. Uh, it would be a day in the middle of the month to avoid any conflict with the holidays. And based on the hourly schedule we utilize now, which is 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Um, and then we can evaluate the amount of demand and whether, whether uh, expansion of, of uh, the collection days is appropriate. Part of the challenge from a staffing standpoint is the same individual who, who staffs the collection site is also our launch ramp attendant. So obviously we can change that, but uh, for the time being, uh, he's gonna do double duty. Okay. And, and you guys are, uh, and I'm not fighting this, but I mean, you're convinced that all through the summer, June, July, August, and September would be a good thing. I can see where June or even May would be good, you know, where people come up for their summer homes. And We do have it in May. We already have it in May. Yeah, don't okay. we, Bob? I mean, that we, we opened it in the spring for the month of May, I believe it is, and then again in the fall. Yes, I'm not sure. Yep, pretty sure. Okay. Yeah, but we get a lot of calls. I mean, this is something doesn't make a difference to me, but we get a lot of calls from people wanting to dispose of leaves and brushes, people that come up for the holidays and are doing their yard work then and stuff. So, um, and we have to say, no, nope, you know, have to do it in the spring or the fall. And it's kind of like, well, mm -hmm. we want to do it now. <laughs> yep. But, you know, either way. So what do they fine. do? They go up north to Alcona County? Well, I, that's where we direct them. We yeah. direct them to go to Viking because it's the only other place I know. The one this past weekend was driving around Lakewood Shores. You know until I shoot him out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> With a truck and trailer load full. So they're looking, yeah. Yeah. If we they're don't have something, of it. they'll find a place. Mm -hmm. On state or dump federal yeah. land. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because a lot of them don't want to drive to Lincoln with it. You know, they want something right. close. Right. So, I don't know. Okay. Um, then uh, I would make the motion that we do expand the program to include June, July, August, and September. One uh, date in each month, uh, hopefully in the middle of the month. Support. Support. Okay. Roll call when we're ready. Mr. Hinckley? Yes. Ms. Carrasco, yes. Mr. Gajewski? Yes. Mr. Pinkowski? Yes. Mr. Byer? Yes. Motion carried. Uh, number seven, the Metro Act request. Uh, two different uh, items there. There are. Uh, the first is uh, regarding an existing permit with Great Lakes ComNet. 
and they've attached some plans uh, to correspondence, which is included in the packet. They would like to install a fiber optic cable to service the Sable Valley Community Mental Health and the Ani Medical Center. And the permit in section 4.6 requires our approval. Um, I am suggesting this evening that the board grant that approval uh, subject to concurring endorsement of the Road Commission and, and any other agencies that, that may have jurisdiction and also subject to on-site verification of the route by our Water and Sewer Department uh, at the time of installation just to ensure that, that our interests are being protected. Uh, the second item, uh, which is totally uh, independent, uh, is a permitting a new permitting application from Lynx Network Group, um, and they've they've given us a copy of a standard bilateral permit along with correspondence. Our standard approach to dealing with these requests is to request an amendment, uh, re which essentially uh, would reflect a fixed shorter term as opposed to an automatically renewing longer term. That's defined on the marked up page included in my report on, on uh, page nine of the permit. I have prepared a draft letter uh, which I'm seeking the board's approval to send out which would reject the application and uh, request that we enter into discussions regarding those proposed amendments. I note that the date on the letter will need to change uh, now, uh, that being the 29th instead of the 20, 28th as originally planned. All right. Are there any, is there any discussion on the first part? Uh, you know, they, they want to have uh, fiber optics extended to Osabo Valley uh, Community Mental Health and the Ani Medical Center. Is there a problem with that? And do I have a motion for that? So moved. Okay. Support. Uh, moved by Mr. Hinckley. Support Mr. Binkowski, I believe. And uh, any further discussion on that? Okay. Roll call, please. Mr. Hinckley? Yes. Ms. Grasco, yes. Mr. Pankowski? Yes. Mr. Kajewski? Yes. Mr. Byer? Yes. Motion carried. Second item regarding the Metro Act. Uh, the letter uh, will be dated July 29th. Um, uh, you've indicated that this is our usual response to this request. Mm -hmm. And that begs the question, how effective has that denial been in the past? Um, Generally, we've found the uh, companies to be cooperative with one notable exception. Okay. Okay. Well, do we uh, have a motion to, or further discussion, to uh, go with Bob's uh, recommendation that we send this letter, asking them not to go ahead with this? Looking for a motion? So moved. Okay. Support. Moved by Mr. Hinckley with support from Ms. Carrasco that we do go ahead with the draft letter. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Mr. Gajewski? Yes. Ms. Carrasco, yes. Mr. Pankowski? Yes. Mr. Hinckley? Yes. Mr. Byer? Yes. Motion carried. Okay, one uh, informational uh, item that is not a part of the uh, consent agenda. Um, accessory structure, ordinance, education, and, and enforcement. Uh, yes, we've recently talked uh, at the staff level regarding the necessity for a deliberate and proactive education and enforcement effort to control the proliferation of uh, non-compliant accessory structures in the community. Uh, the subject came up at the Planning Commission as well. Uh, and specifically what we're talking about here are the numerous and uh, various forms of prefabricated structures uh, that don't comply with the ordinance. Uh, typically, uh, they can be uh, erected um, and relocated easily. They are made of aluminum, fiberglass, canvas sheds, uh, uh, metal infrastructure covered with plastic tarps, and similar types of construction is what we're talking about. Um, those structures would require issuance of a land use permit and that would not be permissible under the current ordinances. So 
Uh, we suspect that there is uh, um, so a potential awareness issue in the community, so I believe some education is, is uh, important. Part of the reason for raising the subject this evening, frankly, we intend to publish an ad in the paper, and if the board has any input regarding the content of that ad, uh, certainly it can be modified. We would put something on the website, uh, allow some time for voluntary uh, compliance to take place, and then uh, begin uh, direct interaction with the property owners where the structures remained in place. Um, wanted to make the board aware of both the intent and, and specifically the ad before we publish it. And again, if there's any input or questions, uh, we certainly uh, can modify that or, or change the approach. But again, it would seem that the education is probably an important precursor to any kind of an enforcement effort here. Uh, the other informational item that's an add-on is the road chloride application schedule. We anticipate grading, the road commission grading late this week and doing application early next week, weather dependent. That would leave open the question uh, later in the fall as to whether we should do another application, which we'll have to revisit. But we've gotten some questions recently uh, about the schedule and intent, so I thought I should let you and, and folks in the community know that. Been pretty dry lately, so what do you think, Matt? I mean, I mean, we're going to do this, but yeah. I mean, is it great need? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we had a lot of rain shortly after we had the application, and it did go downhill rather quickly, and now it's kind of just maintained at dusty. Okay. Um, and Rick is our liaison to the planning commission. What Bob, the couple paragraphs that he has written here, this is pretty much fits what the Planning Commission thinks, wants. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So this is not a change to our ordinance, it's just a right. little added. Part of code enforcement. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Then uh, no action needed on those, just informational. Um, next we go to. Uh, Resolutions and ordinances, and we uh, have one, and it will be, uh, if adopted, 2015-17. Uh, um, construction contract involves a construction contract for wastewater system improvements. Yes, and, and again, the date would be changed on the resolution as compared to the version that the board members have received. However, uh, what this, this adoption of this resolution is part of the process to obtain funding through the SRF program. Uh, we would be tentatively awarding the construction contract uh, to RCL Construction, the low bidder, in the amount of $2,211,900. Uh, based upon the recommendation of the Spicer Group um, and contingent upon successful financial arrangements with SRF and the open market bond, the separate bond we need to issue as determined by the board. Uh, the engineer actually submitted the part three um, component of the SRF application the other day and um, included a blank resolution, so, so a uh, inclusion of a finally adopted resolution would complete our submission for that particular part of the program. Okay. Any discussion or questions about this proposed resolution? I'll move we adopt resolution 2015-17. Okay. Support. All right. Moved by Mr. Minkowski with support from Mr. Gajewski. <laughs> Mr. Krajewski? Yes. Mr. Hinckley? Yes. Ms. Grasco? Yes. Mr. Pankowski? Yes. Mr. Byer? Yes. Motion carried. All right. Uh, we are uh, to the section of our agenda called Other, and uh, the first item involves uh, Old Orchard Park uh, use request. Yes, this is on behalf of Special Olympics of Michigan to host a 5K run at Old Orchard Park, um, which would occur September 19th. 
the time frame would be approximately 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Um, they have received a copy of our special events policy and the correspondence is intended to be responsive to, to uh, the requirements of the policy. Our, our Parks and Recreation Director has spent a fair amount of time uh, touring the park with a representative of the organization and has indicated that uh, he believes it would be a, a good fit uh, given the time of year, uh, their, their uh, intended route, et cetera. There are a couple of questions that, that would uh, need to be answered in response to the request, however. Um, they are they have uh, asked because to be clear this is this is open to the public it's it's um, going to be a uh, available to anybody who's interested in participating but given the fact that it's a fundraising event they have requested that consideration be given to waiving the two dollar admission fee during this time frame um, they have indicated that they would provide uh, provide a certificate of insurance upon approval and they'd also ask for bleachers, and there's some question as to whether we will have bleachers available given the, the AYSO soccer uh, season, number one and number two, whether it's feasible to transport them back and forth, et cetera. So that, that's kind of an open question. They appear to be uh, understanding of that, and, and uh, we'll just have to see what we can do to honor that request if this moves forward given availability. But those are really the only only two issues we identified from a staff standpoint, uh, other than the basic question of use of the property. And they are asking for a waiver of the two dollar admission fee to uh, participants, uh, uh, workers, uh, and viewers. I, I think that is their intent. It, it would be difficult to yeah. distinguish between the various uh, types of of. Uh, categories of uh, persons entering the park as to whether they were participants or spectators, or et cetera. Yeah. Anybody have a problem with that? Like on September 19th, it's, we could just not charge that day and we aren't yeah. going to have a huge influx of people. Yeah, I would agree. So. Okay. Um, well, then uh, I need a motion that we should uh, say yes to this request. So moved. Support. Mr. Minkowski, with support from Mr. Hinckley. When ready. Mr. Gajewski? Yes. Mr. Hinckley? Yes. Mr. Minkowski? Yes. Ms. Carrasco? Yes. Mr. Byer? Yes. And our final item of the night um, is the resignation, uh, retirement, excuse me, of uh, one of our valued uh, police officers. Yes, uh, Officer Mike Hearn, who has been with us in uh, some capacity since 1988, is provided notice of his intent to uh, retire uh, approximately on September 25, 2015. So my suggestion to the board is that uh, the uh, notice be accepted uh, with regrets at this point. So moved. So moved. Support. Okay, and support from Mr. Inkley made the motion. I think uh, Martin, your support. Okay. Can't talk him into staying one more year. <laughs> Change yeah. the point once this year. I don't know if he'll do it again. Yeah. He seems pretty positive this time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, roll call, please. Mr. Hinckley? Yes. Mr. Gajewski? Yes. Ms. Carrasco? Yes. Mr. Pinkowski? Yes. Mr. Byer? Yes. Okay. Retirement uh, recognized and approved. So. Uh, we're at public comment, the second public comment. Once again, four minutes to speak, uh, no cards needed. Is there anybody that has anything they wish to? Okay. Natalie, could I drag you up there for a minute? Just, you know, this is easy stuff. I just want to know about the road situation. Oh, sure. No pun intended, but that should be right up your alley. <laughs> no pun. <laughs> no pun. <laughs> What's going on? I believe we're in the 45-day um, wait period mm -hmm. before the second hearing comes up, but I think that has been scheduled for August 5th. I haven't picked up my thing from the post office yet. Okay. So, in, uh, you went after five roads, and you're you got. Only yeah. getting three. 
three. Oh, well, that's not bad. It's not bad. Yeah. Three fifths. <laughs> it was yeah. tough. Yeah. I only got the, the short of uh, Cedar Street by 70 feet, which was really disappointing. Yeah. But mm -hmm. don't give up. Sorry, man. <laughs> well, yeah. honestly, I'm out. If anybody wants the rest of them, you're on your own. Because <laughs> I'm not doing that again. <laughs> it's quite a chore. It is. Uh, second item, you, you did get my message and apology for not showing up at your annual meeting? I did. I did. I feel bad about that. You know, and I'm, I'm doing this on TV, so I hope some of your people are watching or will watch the replays. Yeah. For the board's information, uh, some 90 days prior to this, uh, one of their board members, Mike Munson, who is our pilot training guy at the base, asked me if I would go answer questions at, at their annual meeting. And I said, fine, you know, give me a letter. So he generated a letter. I put it in a nice safe place where I knew it was because I needed that to get in the door. They're pretty tight with security there on this. And, uh, and I somehow forgot, I didn't forget the date, didn't forget I was gonna do it, but I forgot the time. And I thought it was one o'clock in the afternoon. It was 10 in the morning. Oh. So my wife and I went through a quick lunch and uh, hurry up, hurry up, no, chew faster. And uh, I went home and changed clothes and picked up the letter and looked at it and it said 10 a.m. Uh, sorry. The I, donuts were gone by the time you called. Really? <laughs> You're making me feel even worse. So thank you. Yeah. Sir? Me, uh, I'm just coming when you people. Would you come up here? Would you come up here, please? Uh, just put the regrind on Pine Road out to Alford. Yeah. And you graded it quite frequently last year. But when you grind it, it is horrible. My car's going to fall to pieces. And I'm hoping after this rain that you get in and do some grading on that Pine Street because you've got a good base there. but. You put that brine on there, it made it like concrete, but then... So. Oh, okay. Yeah, Pine Street is horrible. It, horrible. It, the county needs to do something. Yeah. They thought plowing was going to smooth it out, and it did not. And, and so. so the gentleman is saying that the application of chloride makes it worse, <coughs> right? Well, you can't see that, but it, yeah. it was just the fact it hasn't been graded. Yeah, it hasn't since been summer. graded since last summer, essentially, uh, yeah. when they laid it down. and. Loose gravel draws people spinning tires, and it's just turned into washboard. It has not done what we thought it was going to do, and I think the county needs to go back out and mm -hmm. do a little grading and maybe even roll it again, try to get it set up. So Especially we are getting a 90 so degree summer, yeah. Yeah. like they told yeah, us was what we needed. Now. So we're perfect that, time. Yeah, I think definitely I agree. The with other you. thing is, is, I have these clones that like throwing rocks, and then they put ditches and the road and so on and I, I get fed up with it you know they don't have to go 90 miles an hour they don't even live on it it's just people want to go spin their wheels like you know go on the blacktop you know? mm -hmm. yeah all right thank you we we will uh, sir yes we will talk to the road commission about this for sure is that a road commission issue yes okay all right yes but thank you I'm yeah not. okay all right, um, anyone else? Okay. Then uh, board comments. Is there anybody that has anything uh, that they wish to comment on? Matt, I would just <laughs> thank you and, and Kat uh, for the item on the pumps. And, uh, please extend our thank you to her for that. Um, I would just comment briefly um, that uh, Rosemary Nentwig and her co-chairman, uh, Mr. Brin, do you know his name? Joe oh, Brin. Joe, Joe yeah. Brin, okay. Uh, they did a lot of work for that, uh, you know, the uh, traveling wall. And I think did a pretty good job. I don't, I, I don't have any attendance fingers, but I just am observing the two of them. Uh, they did a lot of work, so 
and I think it brought a lot of people to our town, and so I'd like to extend our thank you to the two of them, so, and all the other workers that helped support them, so. Anything else from the board? Okay, well then we have a closed session scheduled for tonight, and uh, so I had to consider privilege and confidential attorney-client correspondence, and I uh, need a motion to go into closed session. So moved. Okay. Support. Moved by Mr. Hinckley with support from Mr. Binkowski that we do go into closed session. Roll call, please. Mr. Hinckley. Yes. Mr. Gajewski.